Hello makers and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris and if you're new here I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week so don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you can be notified of the latest video. This week I decided to do a sew along with the indie pattern from Sew Over It, the Joan Dress. It was inspired by Mad Men and has a 1960s vibe to it which I am all for the retro. So I decided I'd give it a try. The sketches on it looked very cute and I did notice a bit of controversy between the people that had made it where they didn't feel like it was really them. And since I'm a retro fan at heart, I thought that I would do it up in a nice cute stretch suiting from Minerva and do it up like an office look. So let's get to it. Joan Holloway from Mad Men, the Joan dress by Sew Over It is a great vintage choice. Here's the main bodice. So first we're going to take our bodice front pieces and we are going to sketch out the darts that we have marked. I like to use a water soluble marker to do this. You can use tailor tacks as well if you'd prefer that method. I just find this one a lot easier and quicker to do. And so after I draw those out, you're going to make sure that on just the left side, you are going to put the markings for the neckline here. Now we're going to stay stitch the top of the neckline. So you're going to start at one end and go towards the center and stop at the middle point where your fold is. Then you're going to flip your fabric around and then start at the top on the other side and go towards the center. This is to prevent your fabric from shifting. Next, we're going to put these darts together. So I'm just matching them up with my pin method. And what I do is I just put the fabric together and then I put the pin through and I check back on the other side to ensure that the pin goes through the lines perfectly. And if it does, I know that the fabric is placed exactly where I need it to go. So it's a nice quick method to put in some darts. And then we're just going to stitch that from the bottom to the top. Now you're going to backstitch at the bottom and as you're going up to the top, do not backstitch, uh, raise your needle and then leave a nice tail and then we're going to knot the ends. This is so that we don't create any additional bulk at the point of our dart so it lays nice and seamless along the body. So I'm just doing three knots here but you could probably get away with two. And don't forget to clip your tails. So next, this is how our bodice looks. We're going to be pressing the darts out towards the seam lines on our front bodice piece. So I'm just warming that up slightly. And then what I'm going to do at the top of the dart is I'm going to take the tip of my iron and warm up that edge because this will allow us to press it nicely in the direction it needs to go. So I'm just using a rolled up towel here in place of a pressing ham. And then I'm making sure that our dart is folded the right way and there are no puckers. Then we're just going to go over that with a bit of steam to make sure that our dart is laying nice and seamless. So do that to the other dart as well. Next, this is the lining of the front bodice and we're going to do that with the darts placing forward to the center seam because when we put them together, we want them to line up. Next, we've got our back bodice. So just like we did the front bodice, we are going to trace out our darts and just get those in and put them together the exact same way as we did the front darts. So front darts towards the side seams, front lining darts towards the center, and then we've got our back darts towards the center back and then the back lining darts are towards the side seams on both of the darts in the back here. And so the top ones also pointing towards the side seam. 
So the next step, we are going to join the front and the back bodice pieces as well as the lining pieces. I'm just showing the front bodice piece for now at the shoulder seams. So make sure you pin those in place and then get the side seams pinned as well and making sure you are lining things up with all the notches and then sew those together. So we've taken it to the sewing machine and we've got a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance on this pattern. Make sure when you're stitching it that you've got the dart facing the right way so it doesn't pucker up underneath. Next, we're going to set those seams and I'm just going to finger press them open and then I'm going to take my wooden clapper and make sure that they stay nice and open. So the reason I'm pressing it first before opening it up is to set those stitches in. It just gives a nicer press. Next is the main skirt. So on the main skirt here, we will have four pieces. So two are the front and back and two are the lining. And then you're going to cut off one side of the skirt front. And that is the one on my left hand side. Now I did make an error. When you do the lining, you need to cut the opposite side, the side that will be butting up against it. I accidentally did both the same sides and had to like stitch it back in. So we're going to do the darts exactly the same way as we did before. Back darts point towards the side seams and then the back darts on the lining point towards the center back. The front darts point towards the side seam and then the skirt lining front darts point towards the center. So now we're going to put the skirt together. So we're going to put the skirt front and the skirt back together, right sides together. And so you've got a couple of notches here. Make sure you're matching those up as you're pinning down the side seam. And you're wanted, going to want to do the same thing for the lining as well. And once we've got that pinned, we can then take it over to our sewing machine and get that stitched all the way down. And once again, it's a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So you notice I haven't finished the edges of the seams with a serger. That is because it is fully lined and you don't need to. Next, we're going to press these seams open. And so just be careful along the curve. Next is the sleeves. So with the sleeves, you will have a front and a back side of the sleeve. And you can see that the curve here, we want to gather that in a bit. So you're going to increase your stitch length and make sure you do not have a back stitch on. Then we're going to ensure that we're stitching inside that seam allowance of 1.5 centimeters. And I'll leave a nice long tail and do a second row of stitches also within that 1.5 centimeter seam line. I'm using the longest as the edge of my presser foot. Now we're going to take those long threads and we're just going to gather them between those two dots that we had on our markings. Next, we're going to fold our sleeve right sides together, pinning at our marks, and then we're going to stitch along the long edge here. Next, you're going to get your sleeve board out and you're going to iron it. I'm just using a pressing clapper here to get the seams nice and crisp. Now we're going to do a 1.5 centimeter um, hem on the edge of our sleeve. So just make sure you press that nicely in place. And you're going to do that both for the lining as well as your main sleeve fabric. Turn them right side out and then we are going to attach them to the bodice. So with right sides together, we're going to match the bottom seam as well as the top shoulder seam with the notch that we have in the top of our sleeve here. So I'm just matching that up. And then we can go about distributing the additional ease in the fabric, making sure to match up those side markings as well. So when you get to the top, you can see that I'm just pulling in the ruching a little bit more just so that we can get it to fit quite nicely inside. So once we have that, you're going to add in some pins and make sure everything is evenly distributed just by pulling it along with your finger here. Now we're going to sew along our sleeve. So take it over to our sewing machine and I like to have it where the bodice is on the bottom and the sleeve is on the top. I find this is the easiest way and you don't get any puckers or catching certain areas of the sleeve that you don't want to catch and make sure to backstitch at the front and the back. 
Now we're going to trim down the seam, the seam to five millimeters. So I was just marking that and I'm using my sharp scissors to get the initial cut in because it is quite heavy. And then I am taking my pinking shears and I'm just going around this so that it is trimmed down to five centimeters, joining the skirt to the bodice. So with this, you are going to match up the darts. And so as we had pressed them in opposite directions, um, they will fit together on when you put the lining together. So these are all going to be pointing in the same direction on your main bodice and main skirt and the lining will all be pointing in the same directions, if that makes sense. So just pin along that top seam and then we're going to get that stitched and then we're going to press it up towards the top of the bodice. And then with the lining, we're going to press that down, inserting the concealed zipper. So now we're going to work on the main bodice fabric and we're going to draw in our seam allowances of 1.5 centimeters along the top and 1.5 centimeters along the edge. And I'm just continuing this marking to make sure that I maintain that seam allowance as I'm putting my zipper in place. So next, I've already pressed my zipper open. If you need assistance on a zipper tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description down below and a card up here. But we are just going to install our invisible zipper along that 1.5 centimeter seam allowance right where that tape, the zipper tape is. So after we've put that in, we're going to take our zipper foot on. So remove the regular presser foot and get your invisible zipper foot on. Place that on your machine. And then we are going to stitch down. And so this enables us to get very close to the zipper teeth and make it look completely invisible. And so because we pressed the teeth down before, you can it's, it's very easy for it to lay flat. If you don't press it down before, you're gonna have a bit of difficulties. So next, this is a little trick that I use to help join up those waist seams. So I actually take my invisible, or my washable marker and I make a mark where the zipper joins that invisible seam and that is what I pin first when I'm putting that in. So I've already marked my seam allowance and how far out it needs to go and then I continue to pull it down and up towards the top. That way it always matches up at that seam. Because if it doesn't match up it's gonna look terrible. So it looks really professional when it is matched up like that. And we've got our 1.5 centimeter seam allowance at the top. Next, we need to join the bottom end of this seam. So I've got that pinned and what I'm doing, I've just got my regular presser foot on and I'm going a few centimeters down from the zipper and I'm starting my seam here. I'm just back stitching and going right down to the bottom where we have our notch for our kick pleat. Now I'm going to switch my foot and I'm going to put on a traditional zipper foot and you want to put it on the right side so that when you flip your fabric around, you're gonna start where you started your seam and you're gonna go back towards the zipper along that 1.5 centimeter seam and then you're going to get rather close to that end of that invisible zipper and you're going to back stitch there as well for added security and then it should look like this. And now it's a seamless seam going up the back of your skirt. The necktie. So we've got two pieces for the necktie, the right and the left side. We are going to put them right sides together, um, each individually, and then you're going to pin along the notches. And so you've got one side that we are going to pin and go around the one edge, and then the other side, the opposite end, we are only going to go down the one side of it. So we're gonna do the same for the other side of the necktie. You'll notice that that seam goes a little bit longer because our necktie is on the side. And so you're just gonna stitch down there and then along here. So now that I've got that stitched, we are going to trim down the seam allowances. So I'm just cutting a diagonal line to that and I'm taking out my pinking shears and I'm trimming that down also to a five millimeter seam allowance, but leave the other seam allowance on on the other side. We want that to be the full seam allowance. So this is what it should look like. And now we're going to turn it right sides out. We're just gonna pull that out. 
and I'm going to use my point turner to get nice crisp points along the edge of this because this is what you're going to be seeing. It's going to be front and center. You want it to look nice and crisp. And now we are going to give it a nice good press. So make sure you line up the notches along the top open end and then with a decent amount of steam, get this pressed nice and flat. So this is what it should look like when it's all done. So now we're going to attach the necktie to the bodice on the main bodice. And so we're going to pin the back pieces in place and that just goes right to the edge of where our zipper has been installed. And then we're going to take it all the way along. So that open edge that we didn't stitch, that's what we're actually pinning. And then once you get to the end where we started to have our stitches, that's where you're going to stop. And it'll tell you with the notches on the pattern as well where you should be. So if you've got it together on the right side, it'll line up right towards those notches. So using that 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, we're gonna stitch those neckties on. And now that you have it done to both sides, this is what it should look like. Attaching the lining to the necktie and the sleeves of the dress. So we're going to do a one centimeter seam allowance and we're going to press that on our lining fabric along the center back seam. Next, we are going to place right sides together, our main dress and our lining. And so you see how we've got the 1.5 centimeters folded over and we're matching that exactly to the edge of the rest of our fabric. So we're just going to pin this all the way around the neck lining, so the neck hole, and just make sure you're matching up those shoulder seams and you are not catching any fabric, but we're going to go from one end to the other and stitch that. But the crucial thing is ensuring that you do have those edges folded over the 1.5 centimeters because that's what's going to turn over and create a nice crisp edge for our lining when we go to hand stitch it in later. So next we are going to flip that right side out and then we're going to do some understitching. So we're going to make sure that the seams are pressed towards the lining side. So I've just made sure of that. And then close to the edge of that seam, we are just going to do a row of stitching along the lining to hold that in place. And now we are going to put it back uh, inside out. And then I'm just making a snip with my sharp scissors because my uh, shears won't go through them on my pinking shears. And I'm just trimming those seam allowances down to 0.5 or to five millimeters. And then here you can't really see it too well, but I'm clipping notches into the curves of the neckline so that it lies a little bit more flat. And this is really important if you're using a woven fabric. I am using a stretch, so there's a little bit more forgiving, but if it's woven, you really wanna make sure you get those notches in. So now we can start to turn this right side out. So I'm just flipping the dress to the right side and then I'm pulling the lining through. So now we want to stitch the sleeves in place. So the way that I'm stitching the sleeves in place is a little bit different than the instructions. I wanted them to both end at the end and I'm just slip stitching in here using a ladder stitch to have hidden stitches completely along this sleeve line. And I think it looks really nice and classy. So you can't see them on the outside of the dress and they're nice and hidden. The kick pleat and the hem of the dress. So next you are going to butt up the two, the right side of your lining and your dress fabric along the kick pleat and you've got the area here so you can see where the notch is and we're just going to stitch along there. So you have to kind of pull the fabric through in a little bit of a wonky way um, through the lining but as long as you match it up you'll be good. Get your notch in there and then turn it right side out. And then you are going to turn it so that you can understitch on the edge of that. And you can see that's where the seam is on my lining piece because I had cut off the wrong side. So make sure that you're very careful when you're cutting it off at the beginning. Next, you can see how I am matching it up where I'm kind of twisting the fabric of the lining to get the right sides together with the outside fabric. So we're just matching up those notches and then we're going to make sure that we pin those in place 
and just going all the way down on the other side of the skirt kick pleat. And then we're going to stitch down there. And so once that is done, you're going to flip it right side out. And then we're going to understitch with the seams pointing towards the lining on that end as well. So that's what that looks like when it's all done. And I am just flipping it to the inside. So this is the lining side. And we've got our kick pleat here and we're just going to stitch along that diagonal. And that's what it looks like from the right side the hem of the dress. So next we're going to do the hem. And what we are going to do is we're going to hem the skirt up. We're going to fold the hem up 1.5 centimeters and then an additional 3.5 centimeters. Now this hem is done where both the outside fabric and the lining fabric are stitched together and folded up together. And so I'm just using a slip stitch so that you can't see it from the front and that's how we get our hem. So now we're on to the finishing touches. And so part of that is you're going to attach the dress along the waist seam, the lining and the main bodice. So this is the lining on the top here. I'm just hand stitching it in place. So I'm taking very small stitches along that seam. I'm going in and then I'm tacking through the seam allowance. So it's not actually going to the right side of the fabric at all just going through the seam allowance. You can see it's very close to the edge of that stitching. I'm pulling it through and then I'm skipping a little bit ahead. So a bit of a running stitch. And then I fold the fabric nice and flat to make sure that it lines up perfectly before inserting it through the top along this center seam here. And so this is how I attach my bodice pieces to the linings. That's what it looks like from the lining side. Next, we're going to attach it along the side seams here and then you want to do the back. So on the back bodice where the zipper is, where we had already pressed it over, we're just going to pin that in place. And we're going to pin it all the way down. And then we're going to slip stitch that lining in place. And you're just going to go through the zipper teeth also so it doesn't show along the front side. Make sure that you leave a little bit of room between the zipper and the lining just to make it a little easier when you go to zip it up. This is especially important along those waist seams because there's additional bulk there. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Now we have to finish the lining down the kick pleat side. So what I'm doing is I am just doing a ladder stitch to join this seam together and I'm doing this by hand. And lastly is the hook and eye. So now that you know how to make the Joan dress, I thought I would share some of my thoughts on how the pattern went and how I enjoyed the fit. So one of the things that I really liked was the amount of technical detail that it went into compared to some of the other sew over it patterns. So the other ones typically have a facing, no real lining. This one had a full lining both in the skirt and in the bodice. And I appreciated a lot of the hand sewing elements such as the sleeves as well as the waist seam and stitching those in place. Those are important details in order to make your garments last and to really be a bit more high end. So I did feel that this dress feels like an office dress. Um, I don't know if I would wear it all the time, but I think that going into the office, this is a nice winter option with the longer sleeves. It's got a nice modest length to it. And I really enjoyed the tie detail here. One adjustment I would make is I think I would make it a little bit tighter in the waist because there is an additional amount of ease there. So did you agree with my comments or did you have a flop with your Joan dress? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to check me out on any of the social channels, I am on Instagram at Sheer Stitchery. Until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on. Two, two,